Hello and welcome to ME1201 Computer Aided Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor 2020 for Pre-CA4 question 2. So this is the question, okay, the 2D drawing for Pre-CA4 question 2. Let's remove all the holes, like this tap hole, alright, the ribs. Let's do it last, any secondary features. And what we are left with is just this shape here. Okay, so generally we have a semicircle. Okay, that has a diameter of 44, that's given here. And a rectangular shape that is 44 by 66. So let's head over to our inventor software. This is your final product that we would like to achieve at the end of this video. Okay, take note, the rib here, there's a flat feature to it. Okay, let's create our part now. Go to Files, click on New. Under the Matrix folder, select and double click on Standard MM.IPT. We will go into the Model Browser, click the plus sign of the Origin folder. Left click on the YZ plane. Press the shift key and left click on the XY plane. Remove the shift key. Now you can right mouse click and click on visibility. Okay, so if you notice from the view cube, we are on the front view. Let's just rotate your view slightly and click and we will start a new sketch on the YZ plane. So let's create sketch. Okay, let's recap. We will need to have a semicircle with a rectangular shape here. So you can go for the traditional conventional method where we will start with a rectangle, a circle and a rectangular. And of course we do the necessary constraining. Okay, But you can also do this. Under the rectangle, you can expand it. You will notice there's a center to center slot here. Okay, so what happened here, we will draw this shape, okay, but the first step is always from the word, we will begin with a center, which we will place on the, this center point, okay, the projected center point. Now we will move it upwards and then insert our second center point and then next we will just drag it sideways to get the shape of it. So as you see here, we have accomplish the first semicircle and we also have our rectangular at the bottom piece okay the only thing we need to do is remove this bottom part so what we can do is actually just go to line let's just draw one horizontal line at the bottom here by doing so we are creating two profiles here one is this bigger slightly longer profile versus just the second profile which is just a semicircle now let's add our dimensional constraint so go to dimension from here to here it will be 44 press the tick key the length or the height will be 66 as you can see here our sketch is fully constrained let's click finish your sketch click on extrude tool and like I mentioned just now, we are presented by two profiles, one at the top here and one at the bottom, which is the semicircle. So let's click the first profile at the top and we will extrude it by a thickness of 38. For this case, I will flip the direction of the extrusion. Okay, press OK. The reason for that is because of this dimension line here okay 124 from one end to the other end uh, I can use two methods either by clicking on the face that I have just created which is this face or I can just use the datum as my uh, yeah my dimensioning face now next we have drawn that let's start with this semicircle now the bigger one uh, this has a very awkward shape okay 
if you notice there's a r value here we don't have a radius for this fella so what kind of clues can we uh, figure out from your drawing here if you notice there's a center mark for this semicircle and this center mark okay if you trace it upwards it goes together with this thickness here okay the first feature that we uh, extruded okay so this center mark is aligned together with the the first face here so since we know that we can use that as our yeah constraining feature this bottom one will also be your constraining feature so we with, the, with that we already have our center for this uh, semicircle now let's start with our xy plane create a new sketch okay so this will be our semicircle will be somewhere here okay the center will be here exactly so click on circle make sure there's a green dot just wiggle it a bit until you get the green dot press left click and then we will move to the other end and left click once more and now again we need another line at the bottom here so let's just project geometry and let's project this plane horizontal plane here click on finish sketch select extrude tool click on the top feature and this time we will extrude it by 78 and this 78 is actually symmetry about the xy plane so let's select symmetry direction if you notice i have not selected the other side so let's just move your cursor around it and select once more and we have ourselves the semicircle so let's press ok okay it's always best to always double check whether you have anything incorrect or some features that are not uh, into similar sizes okay uh, everything looks okay let's go to our 2d drawing let's try to obtain other features okay so the next feature that i would like to do is actually this uh, diameter 40 because it's rather simple from this end until the center of that diameter 40 is 98 and it has a thickness of 32 from the common base bar so i will begin from this plane here create a new sketch i will next project geometry for this horizontal plane so click on project geometry this horizontal plane and click on circle make sure you are constrained properly okay, if you notice when you move closer to that projected edge there will be a it will be highlighted if it has been uh, snapped on to uh, properly so let's left click and then dimension it accordingly this is diameter 40 with the distance between this end to the center at 98 and lastly we will extrude it by 32 okay our direction is incorrect let's flip it over it looks all right for me let's press ok to end it now let's continue with this feature here okay we have 46 and these two opposing uh, sloping lines are at diameter uh, sorry not diameter 20 degrees apart from each other all right and this sloping line also have a horizontal length of 40 okay if you can see here 2 times 40 means it applies to both lengths here so at the same time when you look at this shape itself you know that they are symmetry about this common axis here okay so means if it's 20 uh, among each other means it's from center to this line it's 10 and center to the other line it's 10 degrees so again we will begin from this bottom plane create a new sketch let's just draw a common line one here 
one here make sure there's a flat okay but where does this go all the way does it go here does it end here does it end here 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 so where where do we go okay as a common rule of thumb okay let's if you notice there's a flat here right we will always end this feature here right at the middle of this semicircle the bigger semicircle okay the reason is simple so that we don't need to have any let's extrude more rather than needing to extrude a little bit by a bit by a bit uh, as we go on okay so that's why we always move it to the center of the uh, another feature okay so this horizontal line you will use this as your tracing line here to here horizontally and then diagonally right click press ok to end the line tool now click on symmetry we will select these two features to be symmetry about a center common axis here however i have not projected it yet so always remember project the line of symmetry first and then you can use symmetry constraint to apply them okay, take note the line of symmetry is always applied at the end of uh, the whole thing so always apply the edges first and then you apply the line of symmetry right mouse click press ok let's rotate our view if you notice there's still green around everywhere okay we need this line and this line to be collinear together so select the collinear constraint select this line and this line let's look directly normal to the top view let's dimension it the front part here will be 46 with an angle of 20 degrees and a horizontal length of 40 Let's make this length equal. Oh, okay. So they are equal. And what am I missing is actually the full length here. From this end to the front part here, it's 124. So let's apply another dimensions from here till here. One, two, four. Okay, let's rotate our view to make sure that all the lines are fully constrained okay by the appearance of a darker color once done finish your sketch extrude select your profile and okay take note the preview is red in color so it means that we are removing material from it so under the boolean output change it to join okay and we need to just flip the to the default direction and the thickness here will be 15 and press ok all right we are yeah doing quite well the next one i will drill this hole here okay uh, the hole is r24 okay because we are using the design intent method uh, for this case rather than using a hole tool to create this function here i will instead create a semicircle or a full circle with a radius of 24 with a dimension radius of 24 rather than putting a whole function a whole tool which require a diameter uh, value so let's begin from this face here at the end left click on it and create a new sketch now click on circle let's wiggle it about get the center left click and apply and under dimension make sure we must remember to right mouse click change the dimension type to radius and now we can place the dimension by left clicking it enter 24 now finish your sketch click extrude tool select the sketch of the circle and this time we will extrude throughout and press ok all 
I will now create all the holes here. So let's begin with this diameter 10. So my method is simple. I will create one first using the whole function, the whole tool of diameter 10 with a depth of 20. And after that, I will use a rectangular pattern to pattern them. Okay, three instances with a distance of 20 in between them. So let's create the hole. Okay, the first diameter 10 hole is actually concentric to this cylindrical feature here. So it's right in the middle here. So go to hole tool, select this starting face and select this curvature as your cylindrical reference. Now change the diameter to 10 if it's not. And for this time, our termination, change it to distance with a value of 20. And take note, your drill point is at an angle or a pointed end drill point. Press OK. Looks good. Now go to the pattern panel. Click on rectangular pattern. Select your feature. Now we are heading, we are moving downwards. So under this direction, click on this cursor first. And then select a edge. Okay. So some of you might be asking, well, what kind of edge are we selecting? If we are moving downwards, of course, we will select an edge that follows that direction. Okay. So for this case, we are trying to pattern this hole downwards, okay, vertically down. So this edge is actually vertically down. So just click on it, change the instances to 3, with a distance between each other it's 20, and press OK. Now in case uh, anyone is curious, if I want to pattern it sideways, okay, just click on rectangular pattern, okay, now we want to move it sideways, okay, or horizontally in this case. Click on this second direction. Now click on a horizontal edge. If you notice, it gets moved sideways following this direction. Okay, you can see the arrow too. Let's enter here as 15 with a value or with or how do I say how many holes to be how many columns to be patterned? Let's put three. And if we want them to be equally spaced out or equally like one here to the other side, we can click on this mid plane here. Okay, so this is just for your general knowledge, not for this question actually. Okay, so that's how you create rectangular pattern. Okay, I will cancel it since we is not required by the question. Next, let's do this counter ball hole. Okay, it has an opening, a bigger diameter of diameter 16, depth of 8. And a smaller diameter of diameter 8. Okay, it's a full through hole, quite simple. Same, it shares the same center with this diameter 40. So let's click on hole tool, select this as your starting face. Now click on this cylindrical reference to concentric them together. Change to counter ball sitting, termination is true all, opening diameter it's 16 with a depth of 8 and the bottom, the smaller hole opening is 8. You can press OK. Now let's do this uh, M5 holes. Okay? This M5 holes is rather cute, I would say, because it's not a fully tap hole. It has a tap depth of 10 mm and a full blind hole depth of 15 mm and at the same time is circularly patterned with a missing piece right in the middle here okay so if you can see here if you can imagine there's an imaginary hole here so 45 90 135 180 so we can pattern them at 180 with instances of five times one two three four five Okay, let's create the first hole first, which is on this point. Select this face, create a new sketch. Now let's project geometry of this horizontal piece. Create a line, okay, from the center. So let's wiggle this circular 
edge to get the center. Let's draw a line here and draw another circle to act as our PCD. Right mouse click, press OK. Our PCD this time will be diameter 30. And click on point to be inserted here at where they intersect. Let's finish the sketch. Click a hole tool. Okay, automatically, since the center point has been placed inside the sketch, it will be selected. Change the sitting to none. But now the hole type, let's change it to tap hole. Always remember your trap type. We have to use ISO matrix profile with a sizing of 5mm. Let's just ignore this designation, class and direction. Okay, keep it default. Okay, the more important option is this full depth like I mentioned just now. The thread depth is 10mm, the blind hole depth is 15. So we need to switch this off. Okay. If it's on means the trap depth, the threaded depth and the drill depth is the same. So we do not want that. Okay, switch this off. Termination will be distance. Okay, drill point. Uh, pointed point okay the thread depth which is this one which is uh, 10 mm okay let's keep it to that and the blind hole depth is 15 oh too long now let's press ok okay, as you can see here our m5 threaded hole is represented by this um, material here Is good let's apply the circular pattern so click on the circular pattern select your feature click here under the rotation axis make sure you click on this and you can select this circular reference this time the distances will be five with an angle of one six no 180 Our direction of the whole rotation axis is incorrect, so let's swap the rotation axis here. Okay, so we'll flip it, and this is correct, and press OK. Now we have all the threaded hole, however, we need to remove this fella here. So, under the seat, this circular pattern one in your model browser, expand it, you will see this multiple occurrence. Okay, and we, if you notice, and you are, well, yeah more in detail you notice there's five occurrence which correspond to all these holes so let me just hover over it you notice that in the model browser the hole will get highlighted too so here this is the first one the original one second third fourth fifth we would like to actually delete or hide this third occurrence so what you can do is actually just right clicking on it and click on suppress so with that we have removed that hole now take note the original item here okay which is this the original hole you could not suppress it okay let's just right click there's no, no icon or no option for you to suppress it okay the reason is simple okay if you are to suppress this if they give you the ability to suppress the hole or the feature it means you are suppressing all the occurrence occurrence underneath it so yeah it is impossible okay so take note depending on that you need to plan out a little bit for your modeling for this uh, circular pattern technique here all right we are almost done we are left with the rib now okay the rib here it has a thickness of 10 mm okay at an angle of 36 However, if you look carefully, there is a flat here. So the step here is create the flat and then create the rib. So how to create the flat? You just draw a line with a length of 10 mm. Let's go to our inventor. Click on this top face of the diameter 40 circle. Create a sketch. Click on line. Okay, we will start from here, draw downwards, ensure that we have that line vertically constrained. Now dimension it at 10mm. Okay, 
Once done, take note there's a maroon line or the whole diameter 40 is really projected for you because when we draw it, it will get projected. Finish your sketch, click on extrude tool, select the feature here. Now under the boolean, we we'll like to cut it and we will cut it to this surface. Okay, You can either cut to a certain length, just a little bit, or you can cut all the way through. But don't cut all the way through all the way the part. Okay, just cut to this surface here. Okay, if you do cut all the way through, your rib will face an issue where it cannot be created because there's a void there. There's no material for the rib function to apply on. So let's click OK. Again, select the XY plane, create sketch. Now we can draw a line starting from this. Okay, wiggle, wiggle until we get the green dot. Left click. And we go here to constrain it there. Apply a dimension of 36 degree. Enter. And everything has been fully constrained. What we need to do next is right click, press OK to end the uh, dimensioning mode. Now we just need to change all these elements into construction mode. So select them first, press the Shift key and select more. Okay, let me just check okay now right let go your shift key first right mouse click and change to construction mode okay so for rip let me repeat we just need an open profile to create it so finish your sketch click on the rip tool okay the feature will be selected uh, automatically if it's not just click on the line that you have created now swap it over to the parallel to sketch plane option and then we click on direction one okay we get the thickness and here we can change it to 10 mm and press ok all right we are almost done what's left is actually the fillet here now the fillet here we will just go to fillet Select here and here and change this to 10 mm and press OK. And with that, we have completed our drawing here. Okay, all the best.